what do you have planned in the future after this sort of pandemic thing clears out? What what have you been doing? What's your schedule like? What do you what does your day consist of? Right. Which pandemic? Porn or Corona? Oh, both. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, obviously you said I'm gonna be at a beach. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> you were living in L.A., right? I'm actually I'm kind of going back and forth between okay. uh, Sweden, L.A. and uh, actually Thailand. OK. Yes. I've spent my winters in Thailand for the last maybe five years or so, four or five years. Really? Yes. Wow. What yeah. have you seen in Thailand? Yeah. Um, although it's been like ma mainly like uh, I'm combining it with like work, like from from afar, like distance work and then vacation. But obviously, uh, Thailand is very, you know, with uh, brothels. Uh, it's very extensive. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you, you'll see, um, yeah, you'll see sex buyers all over um, when it comes to like in these specific brothel areas and they won't be all, um, I mean, yeah, you're going to see different, uh, ages and whatever, but it's obviously there's a lot of like tourists, but there's also a lot of like Thai men really buying sex from, from women in prostitution in, in Thailand. It's, Thailand's a lot like Vegas in a way, right? Sorry? When it comes to like sex work and prostitution, Thailand is very similar to Las Vegas. Is that right? For sure. Yes, for well, sure. Do you think that's mainly because of the tourism there? I mean, it absolutely has something to do with it. Absolutely. Like, um, yeah, like hundreds of thousands of people will go to Thailand, even just from Sweden every year to, to you know, do vacation. Um, mm. So that obviously affects um, the the amount of brothels available. But as I was saying, it's also important to know that it is a lot of Thai men as well who are actually visiting uh, these brothels. And it's the same, you see the same in India. It's not only tourists, it's really a lot of Indian men as well going to brothels. So really, yeah, so it's it's a it's a domestic problem as well as an international um, problem. And are you so are you talking to people there C like compared not to people Thailand. in the different places you go to? Have you you haven't talked to anybody in Thailand? Not in Thailand, actually. I've kind of stayed clear because I'm just like, I need some vacation <laughs> from all yeah. of yeah. yeah. Um, so no, but I've met um, throughout these years that I work with this issue. I met maybe, yeah, if I'm not going to exaggerate, maybe I met like 400 people in prostitution over the years. Wow. Men and women and transgender people. And I've met uh, sex buyers and people convicted of sex offending, you know, crimes and um, in various countries, in Austria, Germany, Sweden, Norway, yeah, the list goes on, and yeah, and so, yeah, so what would I do after? <laughs> so you interviewed, you interviewed, pe like, sex offenders that were in prisons? Yeah, yes, not, not, well, not officially interviewing, but I've done volunteer work for years. Okay. Mm. Did, did you ever actually have conversations with any of them or? Yeah, that's, that's what you do when you do the okay. volunteer. So yes, I mean, I've had hundreds of conversations uh, with people convicted of the most, you know, awful things you can't, I mean, you can't even imagine. And I rarely read their files or anything. I was very like, yeah, just to kind of meet the person, you know what I mean? Instead mm -hmm. of the offender. Uh, but they would, they would tell me, uh, a lot of them would tell me and would share what their conviction was for. And some wouldn't. Um, but yeah, there are some pretty, um, tough stories. Um, and it's also, I mean, I would really say, cause that also hit me when I've, cause I did like years of, uh, volunteer work in, um, in different, uh, prostitution, like red light areas. Yeah. Uh, meeting people in prostitution and then exchanging that for prison work what I really saw and it kind of shook me like what I really saw was the similarities to when it comes to the background stories mm. and you kind of saw like okay like none of you grew up the way you deserve to grow up you know and then things happen and you know your life took a turn and you made bad choices and yeah 
I'm not excusing anything because it's so awful uh, the things that that you know uh, a sex offender does. Obviously, it's it's horrible. But I would also say that I have also I've had some really great experiences when it comes to meeting them because I've really seen the person behind it. Again, not to excuse anything, but just to kind of add to it um, the, the the childhood trauma and the things that has happened to to a lot of people. Yeah, I think the the prison term for the sex offenders is I think everybody in prison just calls them chomos which is short for child molesters. Yeah. So they think if you're in there for a sex crime, you're automatically a child molester. Yeah. yeah. Is that, was that what you noticed? It was most of it with like underage type stuff? I mean, not, I would say that too, of course. Um, it would be anything. It would be anything from rape to, because uh, in Sweden, um, you combine, if you are convicted of a, um, if let's say you have beaten up your partner. Mm-hmm then you will be put in the same prison as someone who has committed a rape. Okay. So it would be anything on that spectra, really. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How long have you lived in Sweden again? Ooh, since, okay, let's see. How long have I been? I'm 13 years, I think. Going on 14, I think. Yeah. Okay. Because that, that part of the world, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, they're way more open sexually than people in America. Most of America is made up of people who are very insecure, I think, sexually compared to that part of the world. Mm-hmm. I think you're doing a great job. Thank you. I appreciate so what's, it. What's the future of your company? And what, do you, what kind of plans do you guys have for the next year, next few years? Um, I'm really, as I said, I'm so in love with LA. So I'm like, I have to be there. Um, and wow, I- that's so funny. <laughs> what How, is that the only part of the united states you've been to no i've been to dc okay and vegas <laughs> dc vegas and la and yeah. la okay yeah. so i need to i need to do uh a road trip i feel to yeah see. yes definitely do a road trip yeah a coastal road trip i mean yeah. obviously through the through the middle of the country you'll see some really interesting shit too right but along the like the east coast there's some there's some amazing places on the East Coast, including oh. Florida, including Florida, yeah. Miami. Miami's yeah. a place you have to go to. I have to go to. It's yeah. it's like another country. It is, it but really I feel is. like I feel like it's like there's so many countries within the U.S. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. But when you're in Miami, you honestly feel like you're on another continent. Mm-hmm. It, it's it feels so isolated from anything else. Well, I guess compared to Florida, because nothing else in Florida is like Miami. Right. But, I have to go. But yeah, LA. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of LA. I'm not really a big fan of LA. Oh. I love I love San Diego. I love like up north California, but mm-hmm. LA just seems like so much traffic. You know. So much like the the people are so superficial and fake there. I feel like not everybody, but for the most part, I think I've been so lucky because that everybody keeps telling me that. Like whenever I go there, it's just like everybody is like, oh, beware, like, you know, me. And I'm like, I haven't seen that yet. I'm really for a surprise. I don't know. But it's yeah, I'm lucky. (laughs) Everybody has been so genuine. And yeah, um, yes. I've made friends, like real friends, and yes, for sure. Oh, yeah. well, it's, it, they'll expose themselves for who they really are. Don't. <laughs> it's coming. Let you know when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I think like we really want to go towards like being more. Um, yeah, once Corona is gone, um, we could be more uh, present. I think uh, in LA, I really want to study in the US some more. Mm. I'd love to study, perhaps. I don't know. I've looked into studying law at UCLA. I've looked into some programs at Harvard, but that's, um, I wouldn't want to be in Boston. So I had to, I, you know, I have to look at some programs that they have that you can do, um, from home basically. Like you don't have to be on campus all the time. Yeah. So I'm like looking into different studying options and to see, um, yeah, I got a good feeling about the future. I know, I think it's gonna, you know, they're gonna happen. So and I see, like, when it comes to this issue, I really see, like, people are opening up. Like, people are talking about it more and more. And um, just checking my DMs every day, I'm like, yeah. oh, wow. Like, okay, there's this guy from Iran or there's this guy from Saudi Arabia or 
there's this girl from Australia or you know what I mean it's like all over so it's so I think people are hungry for a conversation on porn